this is the way to create that effect you just saw. May the 4th be with you. Basically, you know, I had to do a Star Wars thing for May the 4th. Uh, I like the intro to Lucasfilms and the new Mandalorian. I'm not going to show it on stream, but you've seen it. It's kind of those helmets and the lightsaber glow just kind of sweeps across them real quick. I'm afraid Disney's going to come after me if I put like even one second of Disney content in my YouTube video. So I'm not going to do that. But here we go. So basically, all we need to do is create a lightsaber, sweep it across the helmet. There's all kinds of free models and stuff out there. And obviously... The free models don't have a lot of topology and stuff. Some of them are really good. Some of them aren't as good. This cool Mandalorian one. Uh, I'll, I'll link this description below. This is a free download. But basically, you grab your model. You make a metal material that's got some dents and stuff in it. Look up some scratch materials. Blend those together and stuff. And then so we've got a round corner. It's just kind of help that low topology. And then we've got the bump map. We've got textures. And we've got noises coming in, mixing in, just to kind of give some roughness to our metal. And we've thrown that on here and then we just have a black glass for our glass here and really it's just pretty much just pretty much black black transmission here for the glass a little bit of reflection and that gives us this nice black glass look so that's basically all you need is a nice silver shiny material we have a psych wall back here that is black but basically we've got a redshift object tag on here and in the visibility section we have disabled primary rays and all of these options down here that way we still get that light bounce from our psych onto our object here but we don't ever see our psych when it comes to render time this is just nice when you're just going to use one light like we're going to do to light up our scene so just to kind of have that little bit of extra gi in there just to help out so all we need to do to get started is create our lightsaber and what we're going to do for that is just click this little button right here and create a redshift area light and by default it's a rectangle but we want that to be a cylinder. So we're going to say 10 for the size for the X, 10 for the size for the Y, and we're going to do about 400 for the Z. And you can see here, we've got our lightsaber made. Pretty cool. Now we can go in here and increase the intensity up to 200, which is going to be really bright, but there's nothing going on in our scene and we just have a metal here. So we're going to be able to get away with a lot of light. All we want to do, if we take a look at this and rotate this and put this in front of our our object here and we hit render. So if we hit render on this, obviously that looks pretty cool. Uh, but what we need to do is just a couple of settings in the post effects. We're gonna turn on photographic exposure. We're gonna make sure it's set to 180 and lower our f-stop down to six. You may be tempted to lower it down even lower so you can see more of your helmet. But remember, we're gonna be moving this and you think if you can't see all of it, you're not gonna be able to see enough. But it's kind of, once you have that lower and once you have this motion, your mind pieces that together and kind of reveals the whole helmet and kind of helps it. So be sure not to lower this too much for that effect. Then the big one, we've got our saturation up to 1.2, but the big one is gonna be bloom. And we're just gonna turn that on and we're gonna leave the threshold really high and we just barely want it to be on here. And we're gonna have the intensity really low, like 0.2. We just want a little bit of that glow from our lightsaber here. Okay, so now all we need to do is move this across in a cool way so it's like a sweeping light across our scene. Now we could animate this. We could go up here, keyframe, then go down here, across it, rotate it, keyframe, and then go to the middle and kind of pull it back a bit, maybe. And then we have this kind of like that. And it looks okay, but it's not like super cool. And we can go in and tweak the interpolation. We could get rid of this point and just have this like sweep across, but it's kind of flat and basically it's not going to look, not going to look that great. Uh, it'll look fine, but what I would suggest is to create a circle spline. We're in the XZ here and we want to grab this and rotate it 180 degrees. Hold shift and grab that axis, rotate 180 degrees. And then we're going to pull it up around our helmet here. So it's kind of in the middle. And then we're going to scale that up a bit just so it's looping around our helmet. Now that we have this circle around our object, what I want to do is I want to create a null object by clicking this null here. And I want to right click that and go to animation tags, align to spline. And I'm going to grab this circle and pull that in here. And what this is going to do is it's going to put this null object along the path of our spline and we're going to animate that across. So we're going to take our light and we're going to put it inside of our null. And we're going to go into our light and make sure our coordinates are set. And we're going to say zero, zero, zero. You want to zero out the position on that. So the reason I'm doing this versus just aligning my light to the path is because now we can actually 
control this light freely along this path and it's still going to follow the general path here but we'll be able to control the rotation and position of this with a vibrate tag which we'll do in a second so inside of our animation path what we need to do is with this tag we need to make sure frame zero go to our align to spline tag click keyframe zero go to the end here frame 24 and slide that up and we're going to be around 55 or so just so it's kind of on the other side of our helmet we'll keyframe that so now we have this nice zoom, 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 right you make the sound effect zoom, right so you have to so now we have this kind of moving around in a much nicer way than we could have animated and it was a lot faster than keyframing and changing it and changing that for me at least and so now what we can do is we can right click our area light here go to animation tags and go to vibrate and instead of this we can enable the position we can say 500 by 500 by 500 but lower the frequency down to 0.1 and this is going to allow it to go closer to the object closer to the helmet further away from the helmet up and down just to kind of create a more organic look as it's sweeping across so it's kind of like a lightsaber fight and then we're going to go to the rotation and we're going to say 360 360 360 and we're going to lower the frequency down to 0.5 so now when we hit play you'll see that our lightsaber is you know kind of swirling around and we didn't have to animate that at all so we just have this natural lightsaber path as it moves around and we can increase the scale and or frequency of these objects as you want to get different looks as well as just changing the seed and that will get you a completely different look just changing that seed so if you want to do multiple ones and you don't want it to be exactly the same just change the seed so now we have this nice looping thing so we can pause here hit render we have this nice cool effect that's going to be this nice organic look as it sweeps across here so now that we've got our lightsaber kind of sweeping across our helmet really easily in a very procedural way that we can change and tweak what we need to do is make sure that we have a motion blur on because that's what makes lightsabers cool is when they have that cool motion blur as they you know right so go into i'm going to keep making noises throughout this whole video go into your render settings go to the redshift tag and then under advanced we want to go to motion blur we're going to enable that i like to turn up the steps to at least four and then for this, I changed the frame duration up to three. It's gonna take that motion across three frames and create four steps of it through that. So now if we notice, we can have our IPR on and do bucket rendering and it looks exactly the same because motion blur does not work with the IPR. It has to be the render view. So now you can see we've got that blur from our lightsaber and this is just gonna look a lot cooler in motion as we have this sweep across our scene here. We could go in and change the color of our lightsaber if we wanted to. We could adjust this to say red if we wanted it to be red. Obviously that's gonna look different. So what I would do is I would create a project for each color. And then inside of here, you need to adjust the bloom threshold and stuff based on the colors because you know obviously red's not as bright as white so you might need to lower that threshold a little bit there and increase that intensity on that a little bit then we can go to render view output make sure you have it set to all frames save that out as the one you want to color it so this is red tut and then what I would do is I go to the render tab go down to add to render queue rather than just hitting the render to picture viewer add to render queue You'll have to save your project which is fine and then you have those different projects of different colors and you can just queue them all up so here i have may 4th i've got the white then the blue then the green then the red and so you just can queue all of these up so then when you're ready you just hit this play button right here and it's going to start just working its way through all of those and so you can do all those without having to you know open up one and render it open up another render it it's just going to work better than the render to picture viewer. So you can just render queue those up and then you take those into Premiere or an editing software and just kind of chop them up and splice them together or just put them back to back since they're all just a second long. One thing I would suggest is if you're going to recreate this effect is every now and then for a different project, just kind of rotate this around. You don't even have to have it be perfect. Just kind of rotate it around so that now we're going to can go around across the other way. Okay. So left and then right you also could just change your keyframes if you wanted to on your position 
So there you go. Hopefully that was a helpful little fun way to just create some cool lightsaber looks. If you have never used the area light, cylinder lights, they create this really cool look and it's a really neat effect if you put them in cloners and shapes and make an array out of them. It's kind of a really cool ring light type look. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Turning on motion blur is going to be key and just, you know, have fun with it. So may the fourth be with you. Live long and prosper. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, may the fourth be with you and have a great day. Thanks guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more videos. Thank you guys so much. See you next time. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out.